Today we're working on our Doosan Lynx 2100 LSY lathe. Uh, we're making uh, blanks for our twin flow impeller project. So as you can see in the machine, we have soft jaws finished. Um, the part is roughed and finished turned. It is drilled and bored. The next step for us is to machine a hex on the face of the part. And in order to do that, we need to first install a new tool locator in the turret. I want to mill this hex with this new face milling tool holder that we have here. Um, obviously, before we can do any milling, we need to install this tool holder in our machine as well as in our master cam file. While we're working in the machine, I also want to add this dual station turning holder. Uh, this is going to give me the ability to turn on the main spindle and on the sub spindle in the same index position. I also want to add a model of this into our Mastercam file so we can use it to simulate against. Luckily, we have Mastercam models of both this and our live milling head. Mastercam simulator will check for collisions between our tool holder model, our machine model, our stock, and our workpiece all at the same time. One thing that's important to maintain good performance in Mastercam simulator is to make sure that this model is as simple as possible. It's also important that this model is positioned correctly in 3D space. Right now, this model is, is kind of lost in space. Uh, we need to put this as if it were in the machine. So if we're looking at this tool holder, basically with our lug here on the left side, we need this face to face the operator. So in Mastercam global coordinates, this face must face Y negative or lathe X negative. So the first thing I want to do is position our holder in Mastercam correctly. What I want to do in this case is use a uh, translate to plane function which has received a couple enhancements in Mastercam 2023. Um, the first thing that we need to do is build a plane representing our from plane. So what I want to do in this case is position this plane as if it were the front plane. So right now the Z is facing us. I want to position the origin of my from plane in the middle of this part. So I can do a quick shortcut by saying I want to move my X axis I click letter M for midpoint, and I select the midpoint of this line. So now my X, Y, Z origin is set correctly on this plane. We could give this plane a name, but in this case, it's not really necessary. We're only using it for construction. So now I'm able to do a translate to plane. So let's say translate to plane, window select all entities. And now I need to select my source plane. So in this case, our source plane is the plane we just created. Uh, called plane, and our destination is ultimately the front plane. It's important that we toggle on the use plane origins checkbox here because that's going to match up the origin of these planes. And now this part is positioned correctly in 3D space. The new feature in Mastercam 2023 for translate to plane is having all these buttons exposed to the user um, in 2022, these were hidden in a submenu requiring lots of clicking in and out of that submenu. Now that this part is correctly positioned, the next step is to remove all the extra components that are just adding unnecessary file size. We only want to keep the components that add value to our simulation. In this case, it's easier for me to select the components that I want to keep rather than the ones I want to delete. So if I say keep these five components and invert my selection, I can delete those components and now I have nothing but the tool locator left. The final step is to fill all these coolant and bolt holes in our model because again, they don't add value to our simulation. So I can do a wireframe, curve all edges and select this solid face. What curve all edges does is by default, it is set to both and both is going to create wireframe on inner and outer loops of this face. In this case, I only want the outer loop because my plan is to extrude a solid body through the entire body of our holder. And if these wireframe details were here, our extrusion would be full of holes. I can now say solid extrude. And I can set my depth to the back corner of this part here. I can say I want to add a boss and make sure that my target part is our main tool locator here. So now, as you can see, 
our part is now, uh, is now has no holes inside. And the final step for me here is to simply do some window selections with model prep remove feature. So if I just window select, Mastercam is smart enough to know it can only remove faces from one body at a time. So I can simply do this window selection a series of times to remove the unneeded detail from these wedge blocks. And now we have these nice wedge blocks that are set up and our tool locator is now perfectly clean. My final step is I like to remove the history and delete this extra wireframe. So now we have a nice clean solid body. At this point, we're ready to save this tool locator for use in Mastercam Simulator. The way I'd like to save it in this case is save as, and I'm gonna save this into a, a separate folder. Mastercam Simulator will accept either a step file or an STL file, uh, file type. In this case, I like to use STL files because while saving, we have in this dialog the option to lower our resolution. By default, this resolution is 1,007 inch. I'm setting this to 10 thousandths. That's gonna help kind of loosen up the tolerance of the model and help Mastercam Simulator run a little better. Now it's important to notice this, uh, this tool has four different configurations. We can flip these wedge blocks to top or bottom. Now each one of these combinations requires its own solid body because each solid body uh, gets configured in a different way inside of our um, setup window. So this body is currently set up to have the inserts facing down. So I like to use the file naming standard, left insert down or LID, and then RID for right insert down. We're gonna save this component like this. And now I have to simply snap to my front plane and I can do a transform mirror of both of these. Now that we've mirrored these components to have them on the top and the lower half, all I need to do is say save sum and select the components that I'd like to save to match each configuration. So in this case, left insert down, right insert up. Our next step in this process is to simplify our live milling head. And again, this model is overly detailed. We don't need all this detail in our part to simulate it accurately. So the same process as before, Unfortunately, this is mostly one body, as you can see. So when I do my invert selection, I'm only deleting a few components. So my, my first step here is once more to do a curve all edges on the solid face. I want the outer loops only. And then we can build a solid extrude through the part to remove all this detail. We're going to add a boss. As you can see, the part now has lost all that internal detail. And from here, we can simply use model prep to remove anything extra. So here, what I'm gonna do is draw a window around all this. Now this part is currently already located in the orientation we need to do live milling on our main spindle. So from here, we can simply save this model and prepare it for our simulation import. Um, if I wanted to do any milling on the subspindle side, I would need to build a rotated version of this model that faces in the other direction. So from here, again, save as, an STL file with our looser tolerance. And now we're ready to bring this into Mastercam Simulator. So the next step in this process is to import our tool geometry into our dot machine file. When we open Mastercam with a Milturn file or a Milturn lathe file, we get a instance of code expert giving us an opportunity to edit our machine file. In this case, I wanna open our inch component library so I can right click and say open. This is gonna launch an instance of Mastercam where all of the components that live inside of this dot machine file will be editable. 
by default, this uh, machine definition manager is going to launch. For now, we can cancel out of this. And if we look at our levels manager, we see all these levels that just show basically all these components that are already part of our machine file. What I need to do is import our geometry into this file so we can import it into the machine. By highlighting all these and clicking control and dragging onto my part, that's going to import or merge all of these models into our machine file. Next, I need to move these models onto their own level in order with the rest of these parts. So we've imported all of our models into this master cam file and put them on new levels with a correct file name that explains what component is on this level. At this point, we're ready to add one piece of reference geometry to our axial mill tool. We need to give ourselves a point representing the center of where our tool locator is going to be. So I can just draw a simple line from the end to the end, and we can later select a midpoint here to define where our end mill will be located. The next step in this process is to reopen our machine definition manager. On the upper tools group, in the upper turret area, right click and say add component. Here we want to add a tool locator. This is now our opportunity to name the tool locator. So we'll name this to match our file. And before we do anything on this screen, our second screen gives us the opportunity to select geometry representing this tool. I'll say STL entity and select. So now we've defined that model as our live milling head. The final steps here are really easy, really self-explanatory. Uh, we have ourselves a tool locator or a tool station that needs to be named. So in this case, I'll call it ER20 Collet because that's what is holding the end mill into this tool locator. Allowable tool types. This is just a live tool. This is not a cross milling head. This is a face milling head. So let's say face tools. And here I could say left or right side. As you can see, the image updates to represent a little bit of an image of, a, of what this tool is doing. Finally, we have to give our end mill a location. So by default, it snaps to number five here, which is the center of the tool, which is what we want for a circular spinning tool. And we just need to define the location where that end mill will start. In this case, we need to reshow our level here, select this midpoint, and now this is going to be the coordinate where our end mill locates relative to the tool holder. We can now click the OK button and our axial mill shows up at the bottom of our list. Now we can do the same exact process for each of our lathe tools. Tool locator. In this case, we'll start with the tool that I'm going to be setting up is the left insert down, right insert up. Again, let's select our geometry. And here there are two tool stations. So I can say add a tool station and now we can give each of these stations a name. So in this case, I'll say left cross down for a left handed cross tool with the insert down and then right cross up. And now we can define these tool stations. So in this case, left cross down. So it's a fixed tool with the insert facing down it is a cross turning tool and its orientation is on the left side of the machine. You can see the tool shift to the left side. We now need to select a position on the tool holder that we'd like to match. At this point, we need to tell Mastercam what point on this tool holder to match into our tool locator. And for this, I find it really helpful 
to have the tool locator and the tool holder in my hands. So looking at our tool holder, when this is in our tool locator, it sits like this with the insert facing down on the left hand side. When we look at the back corner of this, the inner side of the tool holder and the top of the tool holder here represents position number two on our screen. So in Mastercam, I wanna say we need to match position number two, which is this right here, to a position on our tool locator. So in this case, I can click the select button and orient this to face the same way. Now that point is here. So again, we're looking at position number two, the top backside locates on top of the wedge block facing our tool locator. A good way to double check that you selected the correct point is that we have Y and Z zero and just an X coordinate here because uh, the X is just basically saying we have slid this over in the X direction. Y zero represents the back face of this tool holder and Z zero represents the top face of our wedge block. So Y and Z zero with an X offset value is what we're looking for here. At this point, we can now change over to our right side tool. So on the right cross up station, we need to tell Mastercam this is a fixed tool with the insert up. This is a cross tool oriented on the right side of the locator. And again, we need to define our tool holder position. So it's helpful to physically locate this tool holder into our locator and note what point of the tool is touching the tool locator face as well as the wedge block. In this case, it's this point here, again, representing point number two and select that same point here on the screen. We can see here we have an X value with Y and Z zero showing that we have selected the correct point. So now we've finished defining this tool locator. We can click OK and we see it appears at the bottom of our list of tool locators. And at this point, we can now repeat that same process for the three other turning tool locators. So now we have our axial mill as well as our four cross turning tools installed in our dot machine file. The next step is to save the file. So here we can click save. And it's a good habit when you're editing a component library to turn on the blank level and turn off all other levels. Revisit your machine definition and click save again. This is gonna allow the machine definition to open in a blank state the next time you edit it. Back in our code expert window, you can see that the inch component library has an asterisk explaining that it has been changed and needs to be saved. So here we can click our focus into the machine explorer, click save, now that we've saved our dot machine file, we can open Mastercam. And here we are allowed to set up our tools on the machine. Right here we can see our new tool locators are inside of this, uh, this library. And now I can take the axial mill and drag it into the turret index position number two and the left insert down, right insert up turning tool can go to tool 12. The next step for me here is to renumber our turning tool to tool 12 so we're allowed to load it into that tool locator. We can revisit, set up tools on the machine and now we see that tool 12 is not loaded. So if I drag this onto here, we now see our tool holder is in our locator. If I right click on the tool inside the locator, we can set projection length. And this allows us to verify that the tool is installed correctly in the tool locator, as well as set a correct projection amount. And from here, we're ready to move on to the milling step. 
At this point, we're now ready to program our milling operations. We only have one live milling head to do roughing, finishing, and deburring. So in this case, I'm gonna use this bull-nosed end mill with a dynamic roughing, a contour finishing, and a deburring pass. So let's set up this tool in our dynamic roughing operation. Quickly just set a machining region coming from the outside and an avoidance region. So we're gonna define this tool as a bullnosed end mill, 375 diameter with a 60 thousandths radius. And this is tool number two. We also need to define a holder. In this case, I like to define my holder as if it were an ER collet. So if I edit my holder, I can basically say these dimensions of a ER collet Click finish and say our projection is something like an inch and a half out of this collet. And at this point we can step through and program the rest of our dynamic mill and contour milling operations. So now our milling operations are fully programmed. The final step here is to set this tool up inside of our tool locator. So at this point we can reopen our setup tools on machine. The tool number two matches the same number that we numbered our tool locator. So we can simply drag our end mill into the ER20 collet, right click, set projection. And here we can view the entire turret set up exactly the way that it's set up on our machine. The next step for us is to select all operations and click post, which is going to launch our simulator. Let's click launch. And now let's turn off the machine housing so we can see just what's going on inside the machine. And now we can see the full 3D simulation of this lathe running with our milling ops at the end. So here's our dynamic roughing toolpath, followed by contour finishing, and then deburring. So now that we've simulated cleanly with no collisions, I can take the end mill, install it in the machine, and run the machine with confidence.